So guys, what is labor? How do we define labor in economics context? And remember, this topic of labor is not foreign because in grade 10, in term three, when you're doing the South African population and the labor force, we touched on the definition of what is labor. We are simply going to expand in detail what do we mean by labor without, of course, going into detail discussing the economically active population. What is labor? Guys, in economics, we define labor as a human's physical, mental, and psychological effort that is required in the production process. Meaning what? Meaning, guys, when we talk about labor, we don't per se refer to workers. We don't per se refer to employees. You must be able to define labor in economics. Labor is not a worker per se. It's not an employee per se. But we define labor as a human's physical, mental, and psychological effort that is required in the production process. In the production of what? In the production process of goods and services. Remember that we all have raw materials that we get from the primary sector. We then have to be transferred to the secondary sector. Secondary sector deals with manufacturing, meaning we convert the raw materials to make them into final goods and services, meaning we are processing the raw materials. In order to convert these raw materials, that what is required by any business and every firm is a human's physical, mental, and psychological effort. And we consider that to be labor. So it's very important for you to define labor in economics context is that we refer to the human's physical, mental, and psychological effort. And why is it important that it must be physical, mental, and psychological? Remember, when you're discussing labor force in grade 10, we alluded that economically active population are those people aged between 15 to 64 who are willing and able, meaning the threshold that must be met for labor to be considered economically active. It must be willing and able. Therefore, ability refers to a person with a proper physical, with a proper mental, and with a proper psychological well-being to perform the tasks that are assigned to them during the, pro the production process when they make goods and services. Are we still together? All right, that is how we define labor. Secondly, we're going to look into the classifications of labor. We are going to look into categories. In economics, we only have three categories of labor. We have skilled labor, we have semi-skilled labor, we also have unskilled labor. Let us explore in detail what do we mean when we talk about skilled labor. Because skilled labor, this is a labor that firstly have at least two years or more of tertiary training. Meaning skilled labor are those qualified labor are those workers or employees who, who have attended universities or uh, TV colleges as they are called these days or others have attended uh, universities of technologies. They have acquired qualifications that are at least two years or more and they have formal training, meaning skilled workers have a formal qualifications and a formal form of, of training. And how do we identify and see this labor force under the skilled labor? These individuals or this labor, they normally are employed on a permanent basis and they receive what you call a monthly salary. I think in accounting, you have distinguished a difference between a salary and a wage when you're doing the salaries and wages general in grade 10. Salaries is the income that a worker or an employee receive on a monthly basis, while a wage is an income that employee receive on a weekly on a weekly basis or on fortnight basis, depending on the arrangement with the employer.
then the example of the skilled employees that we have in the economy would be the doctors, will be the teachers, will be the nurses, would be the engineers, and all these other professionals or professions that are employed on a permanent basis. So still together. Yes. Then we're going to look into the semi-skilled. What is a semi-skilled uh, labor? Semi-skilled labor, guys, is that labor that has at least few months in service training, meaning this person is already in, uh, either is employed and then they uh, undergo through uh, a learnership or internship as a form of employment, depending on the circumstances. And they go through what you call an in-service training. It's a form of a formal training, but not as formal as that of a skilled uh, labor. For example, in skilled labor, the, the qualifications that the uh, people get after completing uh, training, they always get what you call a degree or a diploma. Okay? Yeah, so after studying and going through training and when they're qualified, they get a degree or they get a diploma. That is a skilled. But in a semi-skilled, they do receive a form of a formal training in a form of, for example, in-service training, where they are learning while already working to acquire necessary skills. And they also get uh, documentation that formalizes their learning, and they're called certificates. They get the certificates. So they go through a few months of training to learn more about the, the work that they are doing to learn more about the technicalities of the work that they do, to learn more about the practicalities of the work they do. And they, of course, have to write certain tests to, to check their ability or the skills that they have acquired through that in-service training. And then they will be given certificates. So how do you see that a person is or belong to a semi-skilled. These are the people that are not per se employed on a permanent basis, but they are other on contracts. Because in service trainings, things like learnerships, things like uh, internships, they have a certain period. Okay, they have a certain period. A learnership can take up to 12 months, internship can take up to 24 months or 12 months, depending on the industry. So how do you tell or how can you learn that these people possess what you call or they fall under semi-skilled they would be not employed on a permanent basis but they would be on contractual basis and that would usually get them to be paid in wages weekly or still together yes so semi-skilled unlike per, unlike a skilled they do not earn on monthly basis. They do not earn a fixed amount on monthly basis, but they earn on weekly basis. Are we still together? And the example of those would be the plumbers and other professions that falls under the semi-skill. Are we still together? Great. And lastly, on or the third category or classification of labor, these are called unskilled labor. What do we mean by unskilled labor, guys? The unskilled labor, these are the labor or the people that may have completed primary school, meaning they might have some form of schooling, but not to an extent that they have attended the higher education institutions. So they may have primary school, and mainly what they do, they perform physical work. Why do they perform physical work? It's because they are good working with their hands. They are unskilled. They do not have a formal form of training for them to do a particular work. Well, the work that they are able to do is the work that they can learn using their hands, meaning it's a physical work. Then how do you know that a person is or falls under unskilled uh labor of course one they do not have the qualifications and two they do not have any form of formal training and thirdly of course they are paid on weekly basis they are not employed on permanent basis in this economic context are we still together yes so the example of 
uh, the people that we may consider to be unskilled labor in our economy. We can talk about cleaners, people who are casual cleaners, those who clean the yards and those who clean the houses, the housekeeping stuff and, and so forth. Because the only thing they are good at and they are best at and their labor is required for is in terms of using their hands to perform the work. What you need to learn and what is important is that all these uh, uh, three categories are in important categories or classifications, the economy. The economy does need skilled workers. We do need semi-skilled workers and we do need unskilled workers in order for the economy to function effectively. I was all together. If there are any questions, please do forward them for discussion before we proceed.